Hi, my name is Nae Bobrin and I'm a board certified behavior analyst with Brett DeNovan Associates. In this video, I'll be talking about parent or caregiver training. Parent or caregiver training is a term used to describe the process of teaching a parent or a caregiver to demonstrate competent and effective behavior analytic treatments. Parent training may include observation, team training, two-person prompting, implementation of programs, and data collection. In an ideal parent training situation, there'll be extensive and high quality parent participation, cooperation with all recommended treatment procedures during therapy sessions, complete, dedicated, and support of only evidence-based treatments for adhering for addressing symptoms of autism spectrum disorders, no misconceptions regarding autism or ABA-based services. In a less than ideal parent training situation, in addition to addressing a child's special needs, there may be a very challenging family dynamic that also needs to be addressed. The same way that skills are individualized for a learner, they must be individualized for the parent or caregiver in terms of the type and extent of parent involvement. Parent consultants must encourage and maintain active parent participation. There may be challenges that accompany efforts to encourage active participation. And remember that the common goal is the improvement of the learner. Some barriers to effective parent training are judgmental practitioners, goals being selected solely from the expert's perspective. Participating in home-based programs can be extremely time-consuming, especially when caregivers who work, have other children or other individuals in their care. Parents may be unaware of the deficits of their particular learner and may have to be educated on autism or the specific disorder of their son or daughter before training them on principles of behavior analysis. And parents may be unaware that skills will automatically generalize from the clinician to the parents. There are also barriers to adherence in which conditions are beyond the influence of the clinician, such as a possible cognitive impairment or social isolation of the parent, which leads to insufficient social support and restricted economic resources. Managing and advocating for the child's various services, the educational level of the parent or caregiver, their socioeconomic status, competing responsibilities, other families in the home, as well as cultural beliefs. So here are some general guidelines. Similar to developing skill acquisition programs, Set the parent up to meet with success. Begin with skills that the learner has demonstrated mastery with at home with clinicians already, so parents have an opportunity to feel that that implementation of a given intervention was successful. Utilizing best practices for training or behavior skills training that incorporate modeling, rehearsal, and feedback will improve parents with valuable opportunities to both observe and practice teaching targeted skills to their child. Tracking and graphing their progress in addition to the child's progress, then taking the time to review it with the parent or caregiver regularly is a good strategy to provide encouragement throughout the intervention process. So what does the research say? In the Allen and Warzak article from the year 2000, it states the following as potential variables to adhering to behavioral analytic treatment. Establishing operations, stimulus generalization, response acquisition, and consequent events. So let's talk about establishing operations first. What if parent training is not reinforcing? There may be a failure to establish immediate outcomes as reinforcers. Basically, be sure that there's a first and contingency established. For example, the clinician should state to parents that there might need to be an increase in compliance before they can shift their focus to addressing toilet training or another type of skill that is a priority for the parent. There may also be failure to disestablish competing social approval as reinforcers. The example here is ignoring tantrum behaviors. An extinction procedure is an effective strategy to reduce tantrum behaviors maintained by social attention. But social approval in the community, like a store or church or at a school event, may be more valuable to a parent than adhering to a behavior analytic procedure that will decrease rates of tantruming behaviors over time. Another variable is stimulus generalization. Maybe there were an insufficient number of exemplars trained. Remember, training a caregiver to implement a strategy does not automatically mean that the skill will occur in novel contexts where training did not take place. A way to remedy this is when addressing maladaptive behaviors is to teach skills to the parents based on the function of the child's behaviors rather than the topography. But be cautious as this may be overly complicated to train individuals with little or no ABA knowledge. Maybe the practitioner trained a narrow range of setting stimuli. This can be improved with self-management tools. Another factor that limits or prevents stimulus generalization is weak rule following. 
This is based on the previous history of reinforcement and history that parents have, including when previously implemented strategies were not effective. Altering behavior terminology with more common language has proven to be effective. An example is rather than referring to something in a token economy system when training a parent or caregiver, calling it a sticker chart instead. This will help to improve seamless generalization. Another variable is response acquisition. The question to ask, is the skill trained overly complex? If so, reduce the intervention to the smallest manageable step and use component analysis to focus on the most important parts of the intervention. Another question, is there weak instructional technology? If so, training should include verbal description of the intervention and behavioral skills training or instruction, modeling, rehearsal, and feedback. Response acquisition can also be affected by the instructional environment. In an ideal parent training situation, there'd be a decreased amount of stimuli that the caregiver is able to attend. Another variable are consequent events, which are punishment and reinforcement. Competing punitive consequences are when problem behaviors have a punishing effect to parents' implementation of behavior analytic treatments, which decreases the likelihood that the parent will implement the behavior analytic treatment. To address competing reinforcing contingencies, consider more frequent reinforcement, a greater magnitude of reinforcement, more immediate reinforcement, and de a decreased response effort. Trainers who establish themselves as mediators of social reinforcement may be more likely to acquire the reinforcing value required to maintain adherence until behavior improves. One of the ways to do this is through the use of emphatic listening. Be not just mental, give undivided attention, listen for statements that identify emotions, and offer silence. Use restatements or reflecting back. We would love to hear your feedback about this video topic as well as ideas for future videos. Thanks for watching.